Creating an elite sector of college football is a go. We heard a month ago that college football and Charlie Baker, the president of the NCAA, wanted to relegate this thing to, to, to shrink it down to the elite programs. who are going to compete with each other and play their, pay their players $30,000 per player for half the athletes at their school. And it went from, oh, what a fun idea. Thanks, Chuck, to, oh, now we're meeting to actually do this. And if we create an elite sect of college football that makes its own rules and plays against each other, that takes out multiple Big 12 teams and, in essence, cancels out the Big 12, the ACC, conferences and college football. We are, we are getting toward what could be an inevitable death of not just the Big 12, but college football as we know it. Yeah, no, this was like reading this story. This is actually like incredibly concerning to the Big 12. And the last time that you and I were on, we discussed, is the Big 12 better without Oklahoma and Texas? And I argue no, because on the business side, like it's good to have those people at the table because you're going to get so much money from TV deals. And it's able for schools like this to have more to pay athletes. And this is where it is so like this is where it's going to hurt just because now under this thing that we are talking about, the schools will now be paying the players in the NIL money. And that's what is so, so concerning, because if you have a larger pool, you can do that to get more of the great players. And now like the SEC and the Big Ten are already getting those five stars. Now the gap is just going to be even wider. And if you do have a good player, yeah, the transfer portal is going to make it so those players are more willing to leave. And that's where I'm very concerned about not only the Big 12, but honestly, like you're talking about college football as a whole, just because it just seems like the rich are just going to continue to get richer. And that's that's obviously terrible for the Big 12 moving forward. And I, 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 that, that is very scary. And I don't know why the NCAA wants that to happen. What's insane about this to me is that the NCAA is almost members, at least, who are in these conversations, like President Moorhead of Georgia, are are talking about Congress getting involved, about the, the U.S. government having a hand in this. This is from ABC News, who is a property of? Yep. Disney, which is ESPN. They own everything. They own everything. And it says Congress has the opportunity to do something right now to help stabilize the collegiate environment. Moorhead says there are many bills that have been introduced or about or about to be introduced. And we're really at a critical juncture for Congress to do some things. And if having this conversation about a new model helps us get to the finish line, that's important. This isn't just a I will tweak some things. This is let's take the teams that people watch, the teams that America cares about, which is a handful of them, and have Congress effectively come in with some antitrust laws, force those teams to pay the players. And if your school can't afford to pay your players $30,000 or more, plus whatever NIL stuff's added on, you don't get to compete for national championships. Yeah, and that is like, that's just going to be the death of everything we know and love about college football. And obviously, yeah. like college football is a sport where the best teams are usually playing for a national title, no matter if they're before NIL and transfer portal and everything. Usually the major, major brands were competing for national championships. But now you just take away the mystique of or the idea that your team even has a chance at all. Like people are expanding the playoffs like, oh, this gives a chance for everyone to compete. No, it doesn't. The rich are only going to be the ones who are going to compete at all. Yeah, this is going to completely destroy like the mystique of college football, where it feels like yeah. even though so many programs don't have the ability to compete for a national title and they haven't, you're just removing them from the table altogether. Yeah. And that's where I feel like it's so damaging um, for the sport as a whole. And I really do think that so many schools are going to realize like, all right, we cannot give this amount of money to these players whatsoever. So either like those schools and those conferences just separate into completely new division altogether, or they're just like, you know, what? we're just not going to play football. We're not going to play football. And that funds so many other programs and so many other, like so many, like obviously people know this, but athletic departments are purely run because of football and the money right. they get from that, from the TV networks and all everything that comes with that. So this is where it's just going to get really scary. And this is where like we are going to see a super league coming. And what is scary is that we all see it coming. And it feels like the rule makers and the people who actually have change in this are the ones doing it. And there's not an overlord or a commissioner or anyone saying, you know what, this is bad. And that's where it's just this is just making the rich so much more rich. And it also may even destroy the Big 12 if this actually happens, because like. 
can can a school like Iowa State, who has a lot of money and has an amazing athletic director and has the means to compete now, but if they have to pay players, like, are they going to be willing to do that? Like, that's where, like, I don't even know if they'll have the means to keep the talent that they have. And that's where, like, it, it, it is so beyond scary. So right. beyond scary. And these kids will be getting full scholarships as well as getting paid 30K, which is it's more than the starting rate for a lot of the jobs that your undergrads are going out and getting in, in the actual real world. Crazy thing, too, is the council is considered a, a, another proposal. This one would have all NIL activities in-house, meaning that businesses can't reach out to athletes, but the schools will facilitate. I, I kind of like this. The schools will facilitate the NIL uh, with, with companies, between athletes and companies, facilitate those conversations, and they would not be permitted to directly pay athletes for NIL and or use that as a recruiting tool. But that is the inverse of what the president of the NCAA, like, it seems like the good idea, the, all right, now the kids can't talk to big businesses. The schools are going to mediate here and try to make this fair and not use it as a recruiting tactic. That seems kind of cool. And the NCAA president says, wait a second, what if we do the opposite and just give the kids as much money as possible? Well, the school gives them money. The NIL gives them money. Free reign. I, I think, and I'm, I'm not a traditionalist at heart. I like college football the way that it was. I don't mind players getting paid. This is this is not that. This is pro football. No, 100%. And it's, um, yeah, because I think for our entire lives, like I was in a speech class in college and we like had to debate, like should players be getting paid? And I remember that that was a talking point literally for like so much time. And I think we all agree, like the players should be paid. Like they are funding so much of what this school does and every school does. And they give so like the players should be getting paid. Yeah. But now it just feels like it is like, these schools are dangling it or these programs are big boosters or a lot of people who just wants to see their school do well are dangling money. Like it's some like, Hey, you got to get it. You got to be quicker than that. Like they're dangling it in front of like 18 to 20 year olds who are very impressionable and will do things like, Oh, I can have money and have all these cool things. And then you have so many parents who have been like struggling their whole life now pushing their kid to do things to help them. And that's where like, I, this is like, like I love NIL and I love what it can do. And it's great when it's at its purest form, but now it just seems like an absolute bidding war. And like, I understand that's free agency, but there is a draft in professional sports to do that. I'm not saying do a professional sports and college sports, because that's like the least American thing you can do when it comes to like just picking a college that you go to, but it just seems like, this is not how the system was run. And this is not what we intended when we said the players should be getting paid. Like there should be guardrails and they're saying, let's just make no guardrails. Let's make no. like, let's just do it in an open field. <laughs> and that's where um, it's, I don't know, like everyone says we need to have change and lawmakers and it's like, okay, but let's actually do smart things with our change and what we do with the laws. I would argue too, that the transfer portal has, helped even the playing field in college football because XYZ player who was good at XYZ school can move down or move across, move lateral and build up. We've seen a lot of programs just spark these runs, go from two wins to eight wins or four wins to 10 wins because of what the transfer portal gives you. Now, NIL takes that parity over the overall of college football and says, ha, huh, just kidding. Only the rich people will get to play here. And that's not good. Uh, there are so many things in today's show that I don't feel like being talked about at the national. You turn on ESPN. They're not going to talk about this stuff because they're the ones that are running this show. Oregon State and Washington State. We, we thought, oh, remember how we were going to do the five plus seven college football playoff format? Well, we're not yet. Some wild stuff's going on in the inner workings of the CFP. Let's talk about that on Lockdown Big 12, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time. What time is it? Game Time. That is the place that I go when I need tickets. It's like I need tickets to the thing. The thing is going on this weekend. I can go to the thing and see my seats on the Game Time app. So right now, you download the Game Time app. It's quick. It's easy to use. Killer last minute deals. I get zone deals, flash deals. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event. Concerts, comedy shows, you name it. Lowest price guaranteed event cancellation protection, job loss protection, etc. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on, $20 off, download game time today, last minute of tickets, lowest prices, and that, my friends, is guaranteed. 